All right. Do you, could you... No worries. Uh, where are we? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Shirata Therapist. Yeah, hi, Corona, welcome. Hi. I, I was just speaking there, and I was saying to you that I think the link that uh, one of the links to try to get into this Zoom call isn't working. Oh, no. And that uh, might be why you don't have many people, because um, I, in my notifications, the link that I went into via the notifications didn't let me in. Oh, no. So just okay. to let you know that. Okay, we're going live on Facebook. I'm sure many of them will come here. And there's okay. links over there to join us live. Uh, again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Shiatsu therapists all over the world. Another week, another great episode, another great guest. A returning guest, uh, Kindy Kaur, welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Good to be back. Thanks for asking me to come back again. Well, uh, we have a juicy topic. Uh, it's a great follow-up conversation to last week's guest, uh, Nicholas Haynes, speaking about the times uh, that we all are going through and, and also the year of the tiger. Um, and our subject matter today is uh, the conception that's so hard and how we move to an empowered reality. So maybe before we get into it, Kindi, if you can um, share a little bit with us uh, uh, and those maybe that might not know you, uh, you know, how you came about to Shiatsu and, and a little bit about your journey. Okay. So, um, so I live in the UK, in Nottingham right now. My background, um, my background was um, as a biologist. So from a very early age, I was interested in the body. I started doing yoga from a very early age, and um, but also science. So my my degree was applied biology, and I worked um, as a molecular biologist for a while at Warwick University, and then in the biotechnology industry. So that was that was always an interest of mine. And um, as often happens with many of us. It was a time when it was a bit of a crisis, a turning point in my life. Um, I was questioning my job. I loved science, but um, I wasn't very satisfied in the job that I was doing. There were issues with my health and my personal life. So often, you know, these things come together and life positions us. And, Absolutely. Um, I had had some experience of shiatsu before, never considered it as a career. But at that time, I was looking for something. It's often it's often the way, and um, I found a school in Nottingham that was teaching shiatsu. So I embarked on that training really as a as a hobby. But it really pulled together my interest in uh, yoga, in the body, in science, in spirituality. It really just made sense for me. So uh, that was with the British School of Shiatsu in. Um, Nottingham firstly, and then um, with Ray Rodolfi in London, the British School of Shiatsu Do. So um, over time, I, I, you know, I, I got to a point where I just needed to jack my job in. It just wasn't doing me any favours. So I transitioned um, to set up my Shiatsu practice. Um, and about, you know, as I was graduating, the, the principal of the school in, the Not in Nottingham was wanted to move on, asked me to take over running running the school, which wasn't part of the plan. You know, it was never yes. part of my description of what I was going to do. Um, and at first I said, no, it, this wasn't what I wanted to do. But, you know, uh, as time went on, I realised that actually this is what I've been looking for. This is what I've been asking for. So I ran the school in Nottingham for a few years until I had my children. Um, handed it over to somebody else. And then when I came back to my practice after um, having my children, my, my children were still quite small, um, I came back to my shiatsu practice, but it just wasn't satisfying me anymore. And teaching wasn't satisfying me anymore. And I very nearly gave up my shiatsu practice. Um, retrained as a, a school business manager, thought 
I was looking for something else and realized that as I went down that path, actually, I already had everything I wanted. I just needed to do it differently. And so it was about that time that um, I met Saul Goodman and retrained with him um, in Shintai, which is an evolution of Shiatsu. So I'll talk a little bit about that today, the conception vessel in the Hara, I'll be coming from the Shintai perspective. But I've been doing that ever since. I've been, um, I run a practice in Nottingham in the UK. I run Shintai courses, mainly postgraduate training for, for practitioners who are already established um, in their practice. Um, I do some traveling. I'll be teaching in Lisbon as well later this year. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's what's brought me here. So thanks for Fantastic. thanks for asking me on. No problem. And uh, I'm sure there was a, uh, a moment or an experience that renewed your renewed, I guess, your passion or renewed your purpose or clarified it. And, and maybe you can speak into an experience or a moment like when that shifted for you again. In terms of my purpose. Yeah, uh, especially being introduced to Shintai. Okay, yeah, I was going to say that there's been several times, you know, um, it doesn't doesn't happen just once. So several times during my life, I've, I've um, kind of had some clarification or a shift. With the Shintai, it was really, it was the first course that I did with Saul just ignited something in me. It was like, um, it was like I'd come home to myself. And it was like, I've just kind of received this upgrade in my operating system. And um, my enthusiasm, my excitement for, for Shiatsu returned. And, um, and that's when I got excited about teaching again. The concepts really made sense to me. Um, I, I think I'd just become a bit bored with the way I was doing shiatsu and I was just ready for um, an up-leveling in some way. And so I've been teaching shintai ever since. I teach shiatsu, but shintai is an evolution of, of, of shiatsu. And um, it, it, it makes sense for the world we live in today as well it's always evolving what I like is that it's not static it's always evolving and I evolve with it and my teaching my practice evolves with it so I don't get bored <laughs> fantastic fantastic and it always begins with our hara you know and uh, maybe this is where we can tie in the hara and the conception vessel and how it all begins for it, for, for us yeah. with the hara and the conception yeah. vessel sure well um I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about Zen Hara diagnosis um, as such. When I'm talking about Hara today, I'm going to talk about traditional Hara and Puku. So traditionally, so Hara and Puku, you might call it Hara massage. It's kind of working directly into, into the abdomen, into the Hara. And traditionally, Hara and Puku was at the heart of, of Shiatsu. Um, it was taught in um, schools, practitioners used it. And I think over time that that seems to have waned. I think most of us have had some training in Hara development, certainly, and Hara and Puku early on in their training. Um, but I don't see so many practitioners using it so much in their practice today. So I wanted to, to speak to that. I think there's more interested interest being ignited more recently. I'm hearing more people talking about it. Um, but this isn't Hara diagnosis where we're working, you know, diagnosis yes. of the Kyo and the Jitsu and the relationship between the Kyo and Jitsu. This is more the deep treatment into the organs and the fascia. And it's really an opportunity to really meet ourselves um, very deeply to come mm -hmm. home to ourselves. And it offers a huge therapeutic opportunity as well. So um, both, both for our receivers, but for us as practitioners as well. And you know, it's something that we can practice on ourselves, self and Puku, as well as working with our receivers. And my experience of it is that, you know, people feel very differently 
they feel very different after a deep horror treatment. Yes. It builds strength, it builds power, um, that mental clarity, a resilience, but people feel very differently after after a treatment. Yes. Um, and clients come back. You know, when they when they feel different quickly, they come back. Yes. I think um, it's very empowering treatment. You know, it builds that strength, it builds that power. But at this time, you know, of disconnection, of disempowerment, it's a great tool to have in our shiatsu toolkit to um, help people feel grounded, to help them feel present, um, to call back our power, to feel empowered. And, um, you know, Hara, when we're talking about Hara, it's a whole system. It's not just the abdomen. So I see it as a, a whole system that's reflected in the Hara. So our physical, our mental, our emotional, our spiritual condition shows up in the Hara and also the way that we move through life. And so, if you like, you might say the microcosm, the Hara is the microcosm that reflects the macrocosm. Yes. So we can, we can treat, on the one hand, we can treat the whole body from the Hara. So, um, you know, in the Hara, you've got, okay, you've got the digestive organs, the reproductive organs, um, the intestine, so we can work with elimination. So any conditions around digestion, reproduction, elimination, but also um, sexuality and our creative centers. That's, that's a very potent energy that we can work with and we can work with it directly through the Hara. Um, igniting that, that, that relationship with the kidneys, the hormonal system, the endocrine system, um, our immune system. We can work with it all through the Hara. And so we might work meridians, but it's actually in a very simple treatment, we can address any of those conditions um, you know, in, a, in a very, very powerful way. Also, trauma, you know, it's a very good way of working with trauma. And when I say, you know, we're working deeply into the Hara, I'm talking about a very sensitive but deep penetration. So, you know, remember, this is, this is something to approach with reverence, with respect, with sensitivity, but also with confidence. I know a lot of people feel quite nervous about going deep into the Hara, but when you approach it with sensitivity and reverence, um, it's really very powerful. Um, you've also got the vagus nerve, you know, traveling through that area oh, that yes. through, through the body. So that, that relationship with the parasympathetic nervous system um, and resetting the vagus nerve, again, it's a very powerful way of doing that. So, so, so many ways of working just through the Hara. Um, we can also work with pain directly through the Hara with neuromuscular pain, um, stiff joints. You know, you can work with that parasympathetic connection through the Hara. So it's so, it's so um, versatile. Yes. But then moving away from, moving on from, you know, the physical aspects, as I said earlier, it, it, it represents our life system. So what, what happens in our life and in our body is reflected in the Hara. And so it can change through the Hara. And, and it's a reflection of how we move through life as well. So when we're, when we're touching the Hara, we're touching that person's life potential. It's huge. Beautifully said. Absolutely. The past, the present, and the future. It's all in the Hara. Yes. <laughs> the Hara, you know, it's, it's in a more esoteric level. You might also say that the Hara, that the universe, the Hara yes. is in the universe. The universe yes. is in the Hara. Yeah. Yeah, I will say to people, uh, you know, 
if you want to change your reality, we have to change your hara. We have to change the abdomen. Do you work with the hara much? Oh, all, all the time. Yeah, since the beginning. It's my favorite area to work with. Yeah. Yeah, so I, you get to witness that every day, right? Everything that you mentioned, uh, all the effects and more, and uh, and even removing uh, trauma. I mean, that's really what I work with all the time. So a lot of the traumas are managed, managed, stored, repressed, and uh, and simmered in the heart. You know, so it can be very powerful for sure. Yeah. And to work with it on ourselves as well. Um, you know, self, hara and puku is, is, is very powerful. You know, and I will often lie in bed at night and um, practice hara and puku on myself. It's because, one, because it connects with the parasympathetic nervous system. So it's a very calming treatment that helps me fall asleep as well. Um, but I had, um, you know, I had experience where... You know, I remember going through a period of time when I would, I would get bloated in my digestive system, and it was a, it was it was something that was recurring, um, and I thought, well, is it something I'm eating, or is it you know what what what's changed? And I went to an acupuncturist, and he gave me some herbs, and it really helped. But as soon as I stopped taking the herbs it came back again and then I thought I had forgotten that we have this it's part of our training that yes, yes. sometimes we don't value what we have exactly exactly and so I went back to doing my hara and puku regularly but also uh, eating less yes, yes. <laughs> giving my digestive system a bit of a break, a break. And some of the simple stuff that we know through shiatsu sometimes I think we don't value shiatsu and I automatically and, and herbs and acupuncture is great you know and it and it did help but I also had some tools that that I could use and it's a basic part of our our, our training and um it brings us back to wholeness this this kind of treatment that's that's my sense um and so if you look at you know what's a What's a healthy hara, you know, hara in harmony? If you look at a baby, they, their hara, if you, if you place your hand on the hara, it kind of bounces back, you know, it gives and it bounces back and it's got that kind of resilience. It's got a power to it and a softness to it as well. But, but it's that bouncing back and wherever you touch in the hara, it feels similar. Um, and also when, when they're breathing, the whole of the hara breathes. Yeah. Yes. And often as you know, as we grow up, um, what often what we'll see is when we put our hands on someone's hara or you or you go into the hara, some spots might feel hard or there might be um, other spots that just feel weak, but but there's kind of no there's no bounce back. You can go in, but you there's no bounce back. And so that's what we call a, a fragmented hara. Um, and so the aim is to kind of bring back wholeness and vitality and power back to the hara through, and we can do that through hara and puku. And over time, it does change. Um, it can be quite know, dramatic. And, it can be very dramatic. And, uh, and also what I find uh, important is uh, you know obviously to not only connect uh, ourselves to our clients' hearts, but to have them connected to their own heart, even understanding where there's tension, and, and also showing them how that tension can be moved, right? And, and that can be by itself so empowering and, and teaching teaching them how to move it themselves. You know, and that's the word, isn't it? Empowering. Yes. You know, teach them what they can do for themselves, and they feel that power. You know, often clients will say, you know, they might not say, "I feel empowered," but they might use words like, um, 
I feel more grounded or I feel calmer or I feel more centered or I feel more in my legs um, or I feel more in my body or I feel clearer in my head. That's often the kind of thing that they're saying after a treatment um, or I feel more enthusiastic. I feel I feel more motivated. Um, I feel like I have more energy. You know, that's that's all empowering. You know, we were talking, we're going to be talking today about how do we um, create an empowered reality? You know, Hara is, Hara is one way of creating that power, connecting with our power from, from, which, from which to create. You know, and as the Hara gets stronger and clearer, symptoms start to change, but um, there's more power and aliveness and mental clarity. Um, and, and I kind of think that's that's what we need now to to move onwards to create what we want to create, both in our own lives, but you know, in our families, in our communities, in the world. Beautifully said. Yes. Birth in a new reality. Yeah. How, how does the con how does the conception vessel plays into it from a Shintai perspective? Okay. So. Um, so Shintai, Shintai is the, an evolution of Shiatsu that's, that's been developed by Saul Goodman over 40 years. Um, it's a unique system of diagnosis and treatment, but it, but it is evolved from, from Shiatsu. And the word Shin, Tai, means core body or source body or origin body. And so the name tells you that what we're doing is activating the person's own inner force. The aim isn't to fix or to cure, we don't do that. The aim is to help them to regenerate their own inner power, to enable their own healing, so to reclaim their power. That part of them that knows how to find um, their own alignment. And so, um, you know, encouraging the receiver's body to do the work is another way of empowering them um, and also encouraging the will and the motivation for them to take responsibility for their own health. That builds over a period of time as you connect them with their own power. So that's part of the, well, that's one of the main aims of, of Shintai. And the relationship of the Hara with conception vessel it, with Shintai, what we're doing is we're treating the primary or the most primitive part of the energy system. So that's the governing vessel and the conception vessel. So those energies are the first energies that are activated, that are ignited at conception when the sperm and the egg come together. Um, at conception, GV and CV are the first energies. Um, to be activated. So they're the most primitive, the most fundamental, the most primary part of the information system. So when the egg and the sperm come together, there's this kind of like a, a cosmic force that, that's ignited at that time. That's our, that's our life potential. That's our life, life force that's ignited at that time. Um, and then as that, that, um, fertilized egg becomes a multicellular organism, becomes an embryo. Um, the governing vessel forms on the outside and the inside of that, of, of that bunch of cells comes from the inside to the front. So the inside, the digestive tract becomes conception vessel. So governing vessel becomes the spine. So you might say that the spine and the governing vessel are the same energy. So when, we, when we're working with the spine, we are working, we are treating the governing vessel. So similarly, because the inside of that, those, that bunch of cells becomes the conception vessel at the front of the body, you can say that when you're working with the Hara, you're working conception vessel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, the conception vessel, it it's manifests into the digestive system, the reproductive system. Um, so the spine is governing vessel, the hara is conception vessel. They're, they're manifestations of the, of the same energies. And so when we're working with these, we're working with our core potential, 
we're working with that that energy that was ignited at conception. Mm. Beautifully. Um, I think the other part of it is the hips. So we see in, in the Shintai, we see the hips as the structural aspect of the Hara. So if conception vessel and Hara are manifestations of the same energy, they're different manifestations of the same energy, the hips is an extension of that. So um, the hips are how we move through life. You know, so with the, the governing vessel and the conception vessel, you've got that, that figure of eight. They're both parts of the same pathway. They're not two meridians at the front yes. and the back. They're parts of the same pathway. Same. And similarly, the hips kind of move in this spiral, this figure of eight, when they're moving smoothly, when they're working right. smoothly. Mm. And so, um, work in the, in, the, in the shintai we think of the, the hara and the hips as an extension of of the conception vessel down into the legs and the knees and the feet and so that's why a lot of um, hara development practices involve the hips and the legs you know qigong practices tai chi uh, martial arts there's a lot of emphasis on the hips yeah the strength of the hips, the flexibility, the agility of the hips, the legs, the feet, the ankles. Um, so that's something that, that, that we need to be mindful of, that when we're, you know, not just to do the energetic high frequency work, but to develop our own haras, we need to be working with our hips, our legs um, and our feet as well. And then the other extension of that then, of course, of, of conception vessel is up into the chest. So, um, you know, we'll work into the hara, but then we'll, we'll come up into the chest and perhaps do more fascial type techniques. So moving into the chest, um, into the throat, the hyoid bone, balance into the clavicle and the shoulders and we see this as all an extension of the conception vessel so in a shintai treatment that would all be considered part of conception vessel and um, you know the chakras also intersect the front and the back the conception vessel and the governing vessel um, so we'd also work with the chakras as well depending on how the person is is resonating. Um, one of the key aspects of Shintai also is our diagnostic model is motion. We're looking at motion. So once again, you know, going back to the baby, when a baby's small, if you watch when they breathe, the whole body moves. You know, the whole hara feels and empties, but there's, as an extension of that, the chest, the shoulders move with the breath, the, the hips open and close all the way down into the legs. So this vital being has this motion in the whole of the body. So motion is also resonance, two words, um, for the same thing. As, as we get older, this tends to get restricted and so, <laughs> We don't have as much motion in the body. Um, that motion is an expression of our original life force, that original life force that was ignited at, at conception. And that original life force is also our healing power. Mm -hmm. So you could extrapolate motion as healing power. So when our motion in our body becomes restricted, stiff joints or in the hara or, um, or, or where, wherever, we lose some of our vitality, our enthusiasm for life, you know, that's reflected. And so, Absolutely. In, so in a Shintai treatment, what we're looking at is um, helping the body to reclaim some of that motion and in, in, in reclaiming some of that motion they're reclaiming their healing power. So as we recover motion in the body, 
we recover power. So again, another way of empowering the system so that they reclaim, um, reclaim their power. And that motion, again, comes from the sperm and the egg. You know, the sperm has a, a wave-like motion and that's reflected in the spine. The egg has a kind of a spiraling motion. If you think about the earth or you yes. think about um, an ovum as it leaves the ovary and goes down the fallopian tube, it kind of spirals down and oscillates. So the three motions that we inherit from the, the sperm and the egg are a wave, a spiral and an oscillation. And those three together um, come together as like a whole body pulse. So that's what we're looking at. OK, it's a whole body pulse. It's happening all the time. Most of the time we don't see it, but at some level, at a cellular intelligence level, it's happening all the time. Um, and so with the Shintai work, what we're doing is, is facilitating the body to recover that motion. And some of it is a gross motions. You know, you see it with the breath, you see it in the ribs, you see the spine moving. But some of the motions are very subtle. Um, it's something that you might just see out the corner of your eye. Um, it's, or it's something that you'll just see as you raise your own frequency. So some of the work that we do in the Shintai body of work is develop our our sensitivity, our, our, our sense perception, so that we can not just see, but feel higher frequencies of energy. And so we have what we call the phases of motion, which you could also call the phases of resonance, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And we choose the techniques that we use according to the phase of motion or the phase of resonance that that person's in. Um, so when they're in phase one, you know, there's less motion in the body. They require more input from the practitioner, more hands-on work, deeper work, more of your regular two hands, shiatsu work. Um, as those frequencies become finer and, and resonating at higher frequencies, so part of what we're doing is learning to identify those, you might be using more fascial type skills or um, starting to work off the body, sometimes on the body, sometimes off the body. The structural adjustments will be um, less physical, more just touching and suggesting. And then as they go into the higher phase of resonance, phase three, there'll be a lot of off the body work, um, chakra work, um, working in the energy body. And so we're, depending on the phase of resonance that this person's in, we might work from very physical, structural, working with the bones, the flesh, the organs, deep into the hara, to through the fascia, to just single point contact, to working with the energy field. So one of the things that I had to learn very early, very early on was to take my hands off the body and give the body a chance to reclaim its power and, and find its own alignments and so that's also empowering you know taking the hands off the body and then watching what does the system do with this information yeah. and when do I need to put my hands back on the body you know I had to sit on my hands <laughs> to stop I myself we, we, are train, we, we are trained so for so long to just keep our hands on the body but yeah but it, it's really empowering to just step back and uh, give give the body a chance uh, and the person a chance to integrate what just happened or move into letting go of something and uh, yeah it's it's, it's yeah. important to do that and just check yeah. it in how what are you experiencing right now you know what are you feeling what are you experiencing what are you noticing exactly. yeah exactly exactly so yeah so cv and hara are the same thing and hips are part of the structural aspect of the hara and you know they 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 move us through life and so you know in terms of creating our reality you know there's a there's a link here with the governing vessel and the conception vessel if you think about um, it's what we in shinta we call the creation manifestation cycle so if governing vessel and conception vessel are both part of the same circuit, same flow of energy, what we want to do is um, 
address the flow in the whole of the system. So whether it's in the spine or whether it's in the hara, when you work one, you're working the other. Okay, so we're looking, where, where's, where's the flow restricted to re address that flow? Governing vessel, also called the directing vessel. So governing vessel um, is associated with some more of a high frequency energy with our thoughts and our intentions, um, our dreams, the images that we create. You know, so when we're, you know, say creating something or manifesting something, we might do affirmations, we might do meditations, we might do positive thinking, but that's only a part of it because what the conception vessel does is translates those, um, those thoughts, those intentions into material reality. So the governing vessel is the yang aspect conception vessel is the yin aspect to, to, to translate that information into material reality. And that happens through the hara and the hips and translates into action. So, you know, I was saying that the hips are what move us through life. So yes. if all we're doing is the thinking and the intending and the dreaming and the affirmations, what we also need to do is the action. Yes. So the conception vessel part of it is the action that's required to translate those intentions into reality. And what can happen is um, if the governing vessel conception flow is incomplete, or perhaps you know our hara is not particularly strong, um, it might be that we find that we start things but we can't complete them we have lots of ideas but we never translate them into action because we don't quite have the power behind that the the motivation the will um, to translate that into reality so I think that's a really important part of this how do we create an empowered reality it's, this is something that we can be mindful of ourselves that you know what's the state of my hara and am I able to put um, my thoughts my my ideas into action to actually create that reality because just wishing it isn't going to happen <laughs> we've got to have the um, the will and the power to create it into just, just to add into that what am I resisting what am I protecting yeah you know what, what you know where am i holding myself right uh and and there's so much of it that happens in the in the front right in, in the heart in the chest in the throat you know in the in the groin area right um, yeah and you do a lot of work with this thank you yes yes all the no. time and, and one of my favorite things is uh to look at people's uh postures right and, and i do a lot of work with with mirrors and and uh and before i even before we even do work with the body it's i find it so powerful to show the person their posture not not to demean them and tell them what's wrong mm -hmm. um but but in a way to help them trans to, to help them through our own eyes uh to see what we see, right? Where the holding, why, why is the posture like this? You know, why, why are the hips moving forward? What, what are you holding here? And you know, what's going on with you emotionally because of it, or with your state of mind? And 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 showing that when, when the eyes see them and you show them the body in, the, in, in your own way, in our own way of seeing it, as, as we see it every day. And then you, you also introduce a, a way of bringing a lot of ease into the alignment. Like you say, a lot of ease. What if we reset the feet a little bit and, and, uh, and change the way you are guarding your hips and if we let go here and, uh, and breathe into those areas that you restrict. All of a sudden they see a new person in front of the mirror. And they're also watching somebody walk. 
Yes. You know, and how they move through life. Exactly. It's quite interesting. But the way that they move and they walk, of course, you know, working into the hara and the hips, it, it might be that there's a structural alignment that's required in, in the hips. Um, it might be that, uh, you know, sometimes like um, organ dysfunction, um, a weak organ or a bloated organ will pull on the spine or pull on other organs. And so sometimes it's it's referred. So working into the hara can really help with that. Um, sometimes working into the hara will actually help to start change the hips and then down into the legs and into the feet. Absolutely. So it's that whole, that interconnected whole. Absolutely. Uh, and working with the uh, structures is, is really a key, right? Uh, and oftentimes, you know, when people have issues in their back, it, it's nothing to do with the back. The back's compensating. Yeah, the, I always like to the back adapts to what's going on to the front, right? Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, when it comes to heart, it's, uh, you know, working daily with, with abdomens is, is fascinating because, you know, I'm sure uh, you also get, uh, you know, the parents bringing their kids, you know, under 10 years old, let's say, and this is, you know, that, that age when they start taking things on in their abdomens, right? Feeling emotions in the house or stresses or traumas in the house or in school and, and suddenly they have issues in the abdomen, you know, and they're taken to the specialists and the doctors and, and they can't find anything. And mm -hmm. then time goes by and anxiety, it's, why it's not going away. And then, you know, and, and seeing that then move into teenage years and how that can start to develop to, you know, disorders or uh, you know, sensitivities or allergies or anorexia or bulimia and, and then moving into the 20s and the 30s and, you know, seeing and touching the heart in different stages of life is, is fascinating because it, you see the progression, how it starts, you know, when we are kids in the house and, and you see the consequences of those events and what they do to us. Uh, every decade right uh, so yeah. it's a it's 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 a privilege to be part of that process to witness you know the process of life occurring in the abdomen right yeah but a big part of that is also you know for us as practitioners um self-care mm. and self-development you know i'm a big believer that when our clients come to us they don't come for our techniques no they come for our state of being, they come That's for right. our energy, our vitality. And so taking care of ourselves is, is a primary function, it's a part of our practice, you know, self-care and self-development. Um, and also that, you know, that self-development also impacts on the place from where we touch. And, and, and it also impacts on how much they are willing to reveal on, on many levels. You know? So, you know, they, they can come and you, you're totally right. That, that self-development that is so important. You, you got to permeate in a way that, that energy that you are doing the work yourself or you've done the work, uh, you have a depth of experience and, and you know, the person when they come to you, that they, they'll reveal themselves that much quicker. They'll be much more open. It's a, I don't know of any other therapy where uh, that self-development is an integral part of the practice. You know, it's an integral part of shiatsu practice. Um, you know, I also I, I do I notice that when my own condition deteriorates, my practice deteriorates. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You know, and it's such an essential part of having a thriving practice, our own condition. And so in a way, you know, it's okay to be selfish. We were talking about, you know, we're not in a, a health care crisis. We're in a self-care crisis. So many of us yes. don't take care of our, ourselves. Um, we're so busy, you know, taking care of, of everyone else, our clients, our family. But 
um, or expecting the, the, the healthcare providers to take care of us, but actually um, we need to be taking care of ourselves. And as practitioners, you know, before, before working with our clients, it starts with ourselves, self-healing and self-mastery. Yeah, I mean, that's why there's such great teachers. That, and you're right, the, there's very few therapists that, in a way, put the onus and the responsibility on the practitioner to develop on all levels, right? Uh, so as you are developing, uh, you know, physically, psychologically, mostly relationally, spiritually, uh, you know, uh, as you're developing as a, as a woman, uh, as a man, as a father, as a, as a wife, it, it helps in, in, uh, in the process of, of uh, working together with our clients, right? Yeah, sure. sure. They're such great teachers for us. And, uh, and they always, I find that my clients always test me too. <laughs> You know, I the, the you know on, on many levels that test us. You know, are we walking our talk? Uh, you know, uh, you know where where are we at today? How our energy levels are? Are we bringing anything to the room? Uh, can I trust you? You know, can are you can you be the one to really uh, for me to be able to let go with? Uh, you know, so so they they always are testing us and. I find that that puts me again. Uh, that puts that emphasis of I, I gotta always care for myself. I gotta be on top of things, and and also notice where I'm not, and uh, no, knowing when to care for myself more, knowing when to take a rest, knowing when I need more development and what area. So there's such that's a great why, reflection. That's uh, why shiatsu is not a job. It's a lifestyle. No. Yes. <laughs> it has to be a yes. lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For yeah, sure. We live it, don't we? I mean, last time, you know, I was on, we were talking about the role of shiatsu um, in the new paradigm. And I posed that question. I think this I, is. I love that. I mean, you really, <laughs> really coined that for me uh, last year. Yes. And I think that was quite a good time to, to raise that question again. You know, following on from Nick Haynes's um, presentation last week which was so inspiring i mean he's a friend of mine and um and a, and a colleague but that presentation really kind of inspired me and he was talking about the energetics of this time from a five elements perspective and um i was really interested to hear him say that you know he doesn't know of any other therapy that's more ideally suited to this next phase that we're moving into the, to the current times, the energy of the current times, and the, the phase that we're the moving into, the, the, the new paradigm, the new earth that's, that's emerging, that we're creating. Um, because he was saying, if, if I remember correctly, he was saying that, you know, one, one, one of the things that we really need now after this period of disconnection is connection and touch. We've been through a period where many of us haven't had enough touch um, so we're craving that connection so shiatsu is, is ideally suited um, he was saying about how shiatsu moves key so it's kind of moving that that stagnant key that's been around and also how shiatsu creates space uh, for, for, for to allow change but also holds that space you know there's many many therapies that create space and allow transformation and healing um, but what's unique about shiatsu is that we, we hold that space. But what really intrigued me, and he didn't use the word, but he talked about what's unique about shiatsu is the practitioner operates from that place of groundedness, of centeredness, of alignment, of stillness. Well, that says to me, hara. He didn't use that word, but I yes, just thought yes, that yes. hara. It's central to shiatsu practice. Yes. You know, and that's and so that's where it's that's that. where it's so unique, right? It's it's so unique on that level. There's no other therapy that that does that, right? And, and it's this where is, we leverage our influence from. You know, our, our state of being is where we leverage our influence from. Beautifully said, and and this is where you know, this is where as shiatsu therapists moving into this new paradigm, into an empowered reality, empowering 
our clients, empowering ourselves, uh, you know, also empowering the therapy. I mean, you know, I feel uh, the shiatsu therapy horror is, is not very strong, <laughs> to be honest, you know. Uh, it could be stronger. It, it needs to be stronger. And, uh, you know, just as I, 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 echo, I echo his words, uh, and not only because of the pandemic, but, but even preceding the pandemic, uh, there's no other therapy that is more suited for these times. Uh, no other, not many therapists that really help people integrate themselves or reintegrate themselves. Uh, we bring so many tools and, and model a way of, of, of living, connecting and interacting uh, that we really need as a collective to, to step forward more. So for, for people to find us. Uh, and we need, really need to resolve uh, differences and, and create more of a community together. Uh, in a way, all the shiatsu therapists, like you said, the, the micro is the macro, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we all, all our collective hearts need, need to unite in a way. And we're all responsible for part of that hara working on ourselves, but, but also coming together to, to present this beautiful art you know, to, to the world. Well, as Mahatma Gandhi said, you know, we need to be the change. Yes. And that's also what Nick was saying that, you know, one of the questions that was posed to him was, what can the Shiatsu community to do to um, create, to help, you know, to, to participate in this, it's in the creating of the, the new earth, the new paradigm. And his, his answer was, you know, we need to be, we could be an example of what the future could look like. Um, so that means, you know, asking the question, what, what do I want? What do I want in my body? What do I want in my life? Um, what do I want in my family? What do I want in my community? What do I want in the world? And, and start being the change now. Um, as an example to um, to anyone who's watching, basically, but primarily, you know, um, like like you said, to come together as a cohesive whole. Um, and you no, know, I don't have answers, but I kind of see shiatsu as ancient medicine for modern times. And it's it's this is the time. It really yes. feels this is the time. This is our time, folks. Uh, what what do we want to do with it? And this year. Um, the year of the water tiger, um, it's ideally suited. So again, I'm posing the question, what does that mean to you, you know, to be the change? What, what does that mean to us as a community? And it doesn't have to be big level political stuff. Um, it might just be small changes. So for me, it's um, self-care. Uh, if I want to see a world where people are empowered in their health and their, in their lives, and it starts rather than relying on um, a healthcare system that's broken and rather than relying on drugs, I need to take more responsibility for my own self-care. So that's, that's my commitment to myself to, um, and to my family uh, to, to model that. I've got to live it. Um, and I'd be really interested to hear what anyone else has got to say about, you know, what, what does being the change look like? What does... Yeah, this is a good time to open, uh, open the platform okay. uh, for some more voices, comments, and, and uh, thank you for posing that question. I think it's an important question. So those on our Facebook group, if you're listening, uh, if you have any comments or questions to add to our conversation, uh, go ahead. Corona or BK, people that are here, if you have any questions, you can turn on your mics and your cameras and, and join in conversation. Yeah, this uh, Dawn on our Facebook group uh, echoed your sentiment about 
practitioner's self-care and self-development is number one. So what practices of self-development do you have, Kindi? So my, my primary practice from before Shiatsu is yoga. So that's, that's, a, that's an established practice. Um, these days I'm doing more Qigong and I've um, started doing a style of Qigong that actually focuses um, more into the yin energies, the hips, the womb, um, creativity, uh, sexual creativity, so I'm, I'm kind of focusing on on that and you know as I as I, I'm post-menopausal now and I'm really aware that as I move into this next stage of life I have an, an opportunity to either deteriorate or strengthen my condition so I'm very consciously working on strengthening my condition I swim I walk yeah yoga qigong they're my main practices beautiful did uh, corona did you want to add to the conversation well, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't a whole lot to add, but it's just really inspiring to to hear you speak, uh, Kendi, and um, I I love the language of sort of the, the broadening of shiatsu and 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 um, into the newer paradigm that we're in energetically. Um, and my word for using is, is embodiment that we really use and bring, bring everything coming back into the body. I think, I think this work as you're saying is so powerful for now because we, we need, we bring our, we bring our whole selves into it and into how we relate. And, and that's what we need to do when we're working with, with clients and when we're working on ourselves and, and that. So, uh, but I find, I find your presentation really inspiring me to, um, yeah, really inspiring. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And where are you from, Corona? I'm in Ireland. Ireland, fantastic. No, I'm in Ireland, I think. Hmm? You wrote to me recently. I, I did. Yeah, I, I'm in Ireland, and I'm kind of. Uh, I'd love to get over for your um, your workshop, but I'm I'm just waiting to see how all the traveling plans uh, pan out. Um, I have a very small practice. I uh, kind of don't don't put myself out there that much, but I I have been trained for 25 years, but I really kind of love the, the broader view that you have and, and and sort of less maybe focus on specific meridians and organs and just that overall energetic so I, I'm kind of very inspired so thank you welcome hopefully you'll get over sometime hopefully <laughs> uh, put yourself out there more corona you got you have you have a lot to give to your community <laughs> Yes. I have a I have a Facebook page called Awaken Shiatsu, but as I kind of say, I really need to waken it up a little bit, you know. <laughs> Not quite awoken yet, even though I've been around a long time. So well, you know, uh, reach out to your colleagues uh, and uh, you know online and in person. And uh, I find that that inspiration is is so important for us in this uh, process of being therapists. You know, uh, like like Kindy, you know, over the years, uh, I had I had to shift. I had to be in, re inspired, re motivated, you know, and grow and and have been a way of beginner's mind again, from time yeah. to time. Uh, that's that's crucial. Um, anything else you want to add? Oh, it's Can so I just funny. Want to say something to that actually. Yeah. I, I think I think if we're bored. With our practice if we're not inspired if we're not enthusiastic about our practice then it's time to change you know mm -hmm. um one we're not really meeting our clients our receivers um but you know that it's, it's there's no vitality there you know maybe look at tweaking it you know well as you are doing it you said you were ready to broaden it out so yeah, find, the, find what inspires you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it's so fun talking about Ireland. I've, I've had, uh, I've had uh, in the last couple of months, about 15 Irish men and women coming to me 
and they're all you know in the same circle and one is you know bringing the other brother and friends and i've never worked <laughs> with a group in such a short time you know all in the last two months that i've all come in together to work on their you know to work on their traumas and to work on their issues and and uh, incredible souls you know all around the same age the same point in life a crucial point of transition and uh, i'm having so much fun uh, working with them <laughs> and they're just they're just amazing yeah class and that's what they taught me class <laughs> that's a lovely that's a lovely connection yeah so yeah, yeah that's great we're all we're all ready to do lots more work on ourselves and i suppose the embodiment for me and the embodiment that chiatsa brings is also about embodying ourselves into the land and the connection with the earth and the meridian the whole aspect so where where i'm here in saigo is very much connected with that um yeah and i do a lot of connecting with the land and and sort of the energies of the land and the energies of my body it's it's yeah, powerful times. Beautiful. And you live in a powerful place. Uh, Nuno Fernandez uh, has put a comment in here. Uh, as a receiver and a giver, the power of work, Ohara Shiatsu really <clears throat> changed my life on a very practical level. It unblocks uh, abundance and empowered me in the professional field. It gave me the strength and confidence to materialize my dreams. So true. Yeah, Nuno did the Conception Vessel Hara six-day training with me a few years ago, and the next year he was teaching, he set up his school, and it's just all change. It's really very interesting. Thanks, Nuno. Fantastic. Well, uh, maybe we'll talk to uh, workshops that you might be doing in the near future. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'm teaching the Shintai Conception Vessel and Hara course. Um, twice this year. So it's a six day training um, in Nottingham in three days in May, three days in June in Nottingham, the UK. And then I'm teaching it again in Lisbon, Portugal for a full six days um, in October, the first to the sixth of October. So you have two opportunities to, to do this training. Fantastic. We'll post, post your website uh, with this video. Okay. Well, thank you, Kindy, again for stimulating, uh, you know, a second part to our first part of conversation, moving into a new paradigm and how we can embody, embody that moving forward and create an empowered reality, working on our own hearts, uh, working on our own conception vessels uh, as individuals and, and a collective. Uh, I really call on all shiatsu therapists to come together collectively and, and step up in your communities. People need you more than ever. Society needs you more than ever. Uh, so don't be, don't be shy. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you, Kindy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's exciting times. So um, watch this space. Power to Shiatsu. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week all. Thank you all the guests uh, that came here and uh, those on Facebook group. Nice to have you. Sorry about the link uh, that it didn't work. Uh, we'll try to do it better next week. Take care. Thank you very much. That was really interesting.